Greetings, projector enthusiasts. I'm Art Fireman. We are projectorreviews.com. The VS-335W is one of Epson's value projectors. It is a three LCD projector. Epson is the primary manufacturer of LCD panels for projectors, so that's not a surprise. The VS-335W is WXGA. That's 1280 by 800 widescreen. It has 2700 lumens and weighs in at a reasonable 5.1 pounds, making it a true portable projector. And by the way, it's only about three inches tall. This video is a summary of the in-depth review done by Ron. He's our most prolific reviewer of business and education projectors. Ron's an engineer by trade and tends to be a bit critical in his reviews. But after reviewing the VS-335W, he determined that it deserved one of our special interest awards. You know what? I have to agree. Before we discover why, let's position the VS-335W in Epson's lineup. For perspective, Epson, per their website, at this time offers 32 different projectors priced between $339 and $999, and those projectors encompass a number of different series, some true portables, some better suited for install in the classroom or conference room. This VS-335W is the least expensive of Epson's widescreen models. At a very affordable price of $529, it's the priciest of the three standard brightness VS projectors, but that should be expected as it is the highest resolution of them. Considered a particularly affordable Road Warriors machine. There's also an XGA VS330 at 419 and a true entry level SVGA, that's 800 by 600 VS230 at the 339 price. All are essentially the same brightness. Note that there are also two 4,000 lumen VS projectors as well, priced from $799 up. For that, you get the high brightness as well as a zoom lens with a lot more range and bigger sound. One more thing, if you really, really want smaller and lighter, Epson does have its Powerlite 1700 series. They weigh in at 3.7 pounds and are lower profile, but the equivalent widescreen 1671W is $799. That's a good deal more, and that's why the VS series are their value projectors. In this video, we'll touch on a few more of the features. We'll discuss the normal setup and throw distances and the zoom lens, and then take our video hardware tour of the VS-335W, looking at the layout, the inputs, and the control panel. Then it'll be time to cover the performance, the brightness, the picture quality, and the sharpness. We have an additional video clip showing PC-free presenting. After that, I will address how this VS-335W compares with some of those pocket projectors, that is, the small LED projectors currently available. All that will be left at that point will be to summarize what we've covered. So, back to the VS-335W. It is a typical lightweight portable projector. It has auto setup, vertical keystone correction built in, and has a slider for horizontal. It powers up both quickly and is ready to use in 15 to 20 seconds and powers down a lot faster than that. If you are a road warrior, it's great to be able to set up and start in under a minute and clear the room even faster when done. Its footprint is slightly larger than a standard sheet of paper, that's US paper. The VS has a fairly low profile, being just over three inches tall. That's a viable size for a projector that's frequently on the go. The VS-335W comes equipped with a manual zoom lens with a range of 1.2 to 1. That's pretty basic, but even a small amount of zoom can make setting up easier. Most direct competitors have 1.2 to 1 zooms or less, and most pocket projectors have no zoom at all. Consider the VS-335W and its siblings to be standard throw projectors, that is, they sit at a normal distance. As you're about to see, for a value projector, it is reasonably well endowed with inputs, and it does support remote mousing through USB. Let's take that tour of the hardware now. We'll start in the front, of course. Notice on the left, we have the exhaust vent. The lens is recessed, and located slightly to the right. Uh, controls for the lens are on the top. We'll get into those a little bit later on. There's a single drop-down foot in the bottom center for the front, and the infrared remote sensor is hiding over there on the right-hand side. Uh, as we switch around to the right, we find the intakes for the exhaust system, and we move to the back where we find our inputs and other connectors. Note first we have a pair of screw thread adjustable rear feet here that work in conjunction with a single front foot for a three point stance, nice and balanced. Our inputs themselves consist of a pair of USB inputs of type A and type B, which can be used for a variety of things, from putting in a thumb drive to do uh, images or presentations, uh, to using it for uh, USB display as a computer input. Next over are a pair of RCA jacks for stereo audio and 
our composite and S video connectors. Computer comes up next, a standard uh, analog computer which can double as a component video input. And finally on the right we have our HDMI connector. Right over here is the small speaker we are facing, and you can just make this out. There's a door right here. That's where the lamp is hidden. It's unlikely you'll ever have to replace this lamp, but if you do, know that if the projector is actually ceiling mounted, you would not have to unmount it to do that. Now it's time to take a look at the control panel and the lens controls. Let's take a look at the control panel on the top. We'll start over here on the left hand side where we have the power switch. Press once for on or twice to power down. Note that there's three little indicator lights there as well for status, lamp, and temperature. Next over is the source search button which can automatically find the first available live source or you can manually step through all the source options. Navigation comes next. We have the menu button here plus we have the four arrow keys in a diamond configuration. The traditional enter button is located in the center, and the escape button, which in this case allows you to back up menu levels, uh, is located right there again. Uh, note that when you're not in navigation, the four arrow keys take on other functions. The left and right arrow keys are your volume controls, and the up and down ones access the horizontal and vertical keystone correction. Finally, is a button for Epson's interactive help. It asks a number of questions. If you find the issue you're concerned with, it'll take you right to the correct menu to make those adjustments. We're looking at the top front, this time at the lens controls. The first thing you notice is this slider right here, which provides a lens cap to protect the lens when traveling, but it also doubles as an audiovisual mute that you can use while presenting. Right behind there are two uh, dials. The first one is your manual focus, and the second one is the zoom control for the 1.2 to 1 zoom. Finally, in the back here is another slider. This one allows you to quickly control your horizontal keystone correction. Vertical keystone correction, by the way, is automatic on this projector, or you can set it manually. And that completes our tour of the VS-335W Epson. Just a couple of quick things relating to the setup. Well, what we see here is the projector is already set up. I am going to adjust the foot drop and watch the keystone correction automatically adjust. If I'm off angle, I can even do that. Well, let's go back down here and do this properly. Welcome back. Let's talk a little more about the capabilities of those two USB ports on the VS-335W, and then it's time to discuss the serious stuff how well the VS-335W actually performs. As noted, one USB supports plug and play. What is that? It allows, with properly equipped laptops and desktop computers, you to bring over the image to be displayed over USB. In fact, it's often called USB display. That's an alternative to using HDMI or a standard analog computer, aka VGA. It also solves the problem of not having a monitor out for working with desktop computers. It's the USB-B that supports plug and play and carries the audio and even remote mousing capabilities. If using HDMI or VGA, the USB-B can still be used for remote mousing functions with the remote control. The other USB uh, type A can be used for PC free presenting. The VS-335W has a media player built in. Just stick in a USB thumb drive and present JPEG, BMP images, or AVI videos. A more sophisticated media player would have been nicer. Uh, one that, for example, directly plays Microsoft Office documents, but for example, remember PowerPoint can be output as a series of JPEGs, allowing this media player to display and page through your PowerPoint presentation. What we're gonna do now is switch from HDMI. Uh, we're gonna plug in a USB thumb drive here and do a presentation off of that. It's pretty straightforward. I pick up the remote control. I'm gonna hit the USB button. A couple seconds later, we will get up our uh, viewer, if you will. Now notice not every image has a thumbnail, it just depends on the format type, but the system supports JPEGs, PNG files, and for video, AVIs. So I can just hit enter here, for example, and uh, enlarge a particular unit. I hit escape to go back. Uh, I can run a video clip such as this. Uh, I mean, uh, do we really, really, really care about hula hoops? I don't think so. Or perhaps I want to run a slideshow, so I might come down here to options, uh, change my options. Right now I've got the slides in name order, I've got three seconds between, and I've got a simple wipe for a uh, special effect. Back out here, and I'm going to start my presentation up here, right there. Uh, let's just bring that image up. 
and that will actually start the slideshow. And here we go. Every three seconds with a wipe effect. And that's how hard it is to use the USB thumb drives for doing presentations. Remember, you can output PowerPoint as a series of JPEGs, and that way you can do your PowerPoint presentations this way. Again, escape takes me back out. And that concludes our little demo of the USB thumb drive with the Epson VS335W. Or you can plug in the optional wireless networking module, $99, to tie in to networks and both present and control the projector using iPhones, iPads, and Android devices with Epson's apps. Part two will cover brightness, picture quality, PC-free presenting, and we'll talk about warranty. Finally, I'll go on a little tirade discussing how this projector stacks up against those little pocket projectors.